Welcome back to Arcade. I am Super Tommy, and this is a series on creating a dungeon crawler in Phaser 3. Now, in the last video, we added picking up coins from our treasure chest and then displaying it in the UI, right there under the hearts, as you can see, right there. And now in this particular level, we've already collected all the things and there is no enemy left. So we're gonna finish up this series. In this video, we're gonna add a little coin icon here in front of the text, and then we're going to show you how to specify the enemies in the level like we did for the treasure chest. We'll do that one more time so that you can see it again. So first, we'll just make this coin icon here in our game UI scene. So here's our coin label. We're gonna add a little image, add image, and let's see, our coin is at five. Let's just say five, let's say 520, that's the label. I'm gonna give it a texture where it's in the treasure, treasure uh, atlas. So treasure the book of this JSON. You want a coin, coin atom. So this is just going to be a coin. So I'm gonna put that there. Let's just see what that is. We'll have to move our coins label almost for sure. There's that guy. Let's put it a little lower. Yeah. 26 maybe, and maybe a little bit over, maybe eight, maybe too far, six. Now let's move our, this here, 10. A little bit more, 12, about 12. Okay, maybe the text could be, maybe the text is too big. So, uh, font size. Oops. Font size, and font size wants a string. Let's, let's say 10. I don't know what it is right now, actually. That's better. How about 12? 14? Okay, let's go with that. So if you're curious where this these uh, textiles, I guess I'm getting hit by this guy, textiles, let's go to the phaser docs and we could go to, let's look for text, regular text, the style. Oh, eh, well, that, that's not link there. So that's not a good place to go, but I do know that they're called textile. So you can just do a search for textile and then you'll find this textile class and nope, it's this, it's right here. This textile object, this type, and you'll see what kind of things you can use for text. So we're just gonna use font size, but there's a whole bunch of other things. And if you've seen other videos on the Arcade YouTube channel, you'll see that we've um, loaded custom fonts from Google Fonts. So do check out the channel for more videos on that our Sokoban uh, series and our how to really make a game in phaser series. Okay, back to our dungeon crawler here. That's the coin, so let's just collect coin 159. That looks pretty good. So what it just dawned on me that it won't have actually because we're doing a two string. Let's, if we do two local or locale string, it'll add the commas. For numbers so just to test that out let's go to our chest class and uh, let's say let's easily say we're going to do a thousand and twelve hundred coins and so you should see i'm not lying to you commas so that's a little nicer if you wanted some more let's say you have you i don't know it's like massive um, a lot of a lot of coins being created in your world inflation is sky high and you don't want it to read like whatever one trillion you can write your own parser to say you know one t or 100 uh, 1000 m i don't even know what that is the number's too big uh, but you can write that parser if you want it may exist on the internet anyway and you would just set here the string however you want to parse this, this coins number and set it to this text 
All right, so that was the uh, coins text with this little icon. It looks nicer for sure. Let me just kill this guy, hit this guy walking around. Okay, now let's set more of these losers that I hate. Uh, so we're gonna go to Tiled, and in maybe two videos ago or so, um, we set these chests using Tiled and the object layer. So here we are in Tiled, gonna make a new layer. Let's call this the object layer. We're gonna call it these uh, lizards or enemies, but we'll just call this lizards. Um, if you do make it enemies, this is where using the type uh, property here would be useful. So I'll just show you. So I have this guy, we're gonna put objects based image objects. So we're gonna create one enemy here. We'll put one enemy down here, and then we're gonna put another one in this room. Let's put two here, right, whatever, we'll put two of them here, okay. So you got two enemies, and so here, we're not specifying name or type, because it doesn't matter for us necessarily. Um, but, so let's just say, what I could do is, lizard one, right, you'll see tiled also shows it right there, and then put this type as a lizard, so that when you get back to phaser and you're reading in this object layer, you get that information, and if you're saying this is an enemies object layer in general, and you put, you know, lizards and dragons and Goombas, knights, you know, whatever you're putting in here, you can specify different types and then uh, create different objects based on those types. So let's save this. We're gonna export out. Great, come back here. This should reload because we changed the file. Now let's go back to game. And just like we did here, this is chests layer, or rather the chest, um, chest objects layer. I'm gonna do the same thing here Instead of just putting one lizard out here, lizards, lizards layer, and then map dot get object layer, and we called it lizards. Confirm lizards. Good. And then we'll do the same thing. Lizards layer dot objects. That's the list of all the objects in this layer, and then we're gonna just move through them. You know, for each liz obj. And what we're gonna do is, instead of creating one lizard from the lizard group, we're just gonna make a lizard from the data inside Liz object here. So Liz object dot X, Liz object dot Y. And if you remember, we had to make this offset so that it's positioned where, or uh, positioned more precisely to where we did it in tiled. So I'm gonna say that, trust me, X is there, because X can be undefined, that's how this type definition is, is defining it. And if you're using modern JavaScript, it won't matter to you, or, or even uh, legacy JavaScript. So with time 0 0.5, and here we are subtracting this object dot height time 0 0.5. So TypeScript, trust me, this is here and TypeScript, trust me, this is here. Okay. So now we've got that lizard. We've got another lizard. And they're all starting where we specified in our tile map. So that makes, of course, creating our levels much easier. And there should be two of these guys here. Yeah. No, so. There's the lizards. I guess they can fire infinite number of these these uh, knives. So this video is only ten, about ten minutes, and we're done. Things we talked about. We'll do one more thing. We're going to limit the number of knives our character can throw, which is very simple. It won't, won't take more than like I don't know a minute. Is to specify here max size. So let's just say max size three can only little. This group will only produce three three knives at any given time. So we do that, there will be a bug, or like an error. As you can see, I need enough room to throw three knives. Nope, that didn't work. Is it not max size? Please hold. There we go, okay. Knife is no. So I got three knives out, you see them, they're on the screen. And then I try to throw another knife, but I said max size is three. 
which means what the group's going to do in here when I do the throw knife, in the throw knife method here, throw knife, it is going to get and it's going to return undefined or null. And so this will be null. And so what we're going to do here is if knife or if not knife, if not knife, we're just going to return and do nothing. We can probably make this better, right? Actually, if we if we did it here, we can save ourselves some unnecessary calculations here, right? If there's no knife, don't even bother figuring out how to rotate it, where to rotate it, etc. There we go. So now no error is a long hallway. Yep. So that's throwing, uh, limiting the number of knives our player can throw. So in this series, we did not cover music or sound. We've done that in other series. But if you are interested in uh, videos specifically on, on music and sound effects, do let me know in the comments below. Uh, there's probably some other features in the Dungeon Crawler that you're looking to do. Let me know in the comments below what those features could be. There is field of view. We can definitely show you how to implement where effectively, like you can only see this room and then the halls and you know whatever the player's eyes can see, it will be it will be um, visible. And then like like this part down here will be black. And if you're standing here, you can see up to here roughly, right? This will be black. So if you are interested in field of view for dungeon crawlers, roguelikes, we can do a video on that as well. And so that would be it for this series. Um, if you do make anything cool with this, do share it with us in the comments below. We'd love to see it. And that's it. Thank you for watching.